Dear students, in this class we are going to see the fields of an alternating current element which is the basic antenna element. In the last class we have seen very clearly the concept of retarded potentials using two approaches, heuristic approach and Maxwell's approach. So using the concept of the retarded potential, now let me derive the expressions of the electric fields of a an alternating current element here. So for that, you take this figure, let us assume that a current element ideal is at the center of the spherical coordinate system, that means it is at the origin. And it is alternating because it is not only ideal, it is ideal cos omega t. So the objective is we have to estimate the fields at the point P which is far away from this. And here we are going to estimate both types of the fields, electric field as well as magnetic field. The electric field in the radial direction, that means in the spherical coordinate system, the point P is specified as R, theta and phi. R is the distance from this origin to this point. So the source is at the origin and the observation point is P here, it is the distance R. So in this one, R is equal to capital R because in the last class we have taken the distances with respect to the origin. But now the source is itself is at the origin, that's why small r is nothing but your capital R here. So observation point is at a distance r from the center and it is making an angle theta with z axis and making an angle phi with your x axis. So the current element is at the center. So now I would like to tell you, I have taken a smallest current element that is possible where I can assume the constant current distribution. The reason is very simple. If you take any huge antenna, the antenna is nothing but the summation of small, small antenna elements. So for that what I do is, if you take a smallest dipole, so this is actually a dipole. I want to take a smallest dipole that is possible, that is possible smallest dipole, where the constant current I can be assumed here. That means suppose for example, if you take this is an antenna element here, I want to take a smallest antenna that is possible where the current I is constant through this. So I can assume a constant current whenever the dimensions of the antenna is very small. So whatever the dipole that is actually the smallest one that can be called as Hergian dipole. Hergian dipole is the smallest dipole where you can assume the constant current distribution. That is the reason I would like to take a filamentary current Li which is flowing through a smallest length DL here. That's why I have taken ideal here. And now I would like to write down the fields of this expression for the smallest current element. Then definitely that expression can be used for any type of huge antenna with the specified current distributions because in our antenna language there are ty different types of current distributions. One is constant current distribution and the second one is you can say triangular current distributions, triangular current distributions you can say and the last one is sinusoidal current distributions. So depending upon the antennas we are going to take different types of current distributions here. But here, as I am taking a smallest antenna element, I am taking only a constant current distribution here. So friends, I am telling you, just to derive the field's expressions of this smallest antenna, let me say a small procedure to remember so that it will be very easy for you to do this. The very first one is, you have to estimate the retarded potentials very first. Because in the last class I told you how to write down the equations of the potential using the two approaches. That is heuristic approach as well as Maxwell's approach. Once the potential is known to you, then you have to assume the constant current distribution. For this case, I am assuming constant current distribution. For half a dipole and quarter wave monopole in the future classes, I can take sinusoidal current distributions. And the third one is convert from Cartesian to spherical coordinate system. Because I am writing initially the equations in the Cartesian coordinate system. But finally, how to convert into spherical coordinate system because the derivation will be very easy. And next one is 
for magnetic fields because once the potential is known to you then definitely you can write down the expressions of the fields using b is equal to del cross a so b is equal to del cross a means what is b b is nothing but mu h mu h is equal to del cross a so once a is known in these three steps you can write down what is a now you can write down the h also h is equal to 1 by mu of del cross a similarly for using this maxwell equation you can write down the expression for the electric field also del cross h is equal to epsilon times e dot so from this e can be calculated here so that is the objective of this derivation and we are going to derive the equations of the fields of this alternating current element and you can ask me sir what is the use of writing this e and h here very simple i can say if you know e field and h field of an antenna if you take this antenna if i know e and h at this point at the observation point which is far away from this source then once e bar and h bar is known to you happily you can write down e bar cross h bar which is nothing but the power it is nothing but a power pointing theorem so using the power pointing theorem you can calculate your power that is nothing but e cross h once e is known to you and h is known to you once the power is there then power can be split into i square into r i square into r is equal to e cross h so here if you split this into i square into r what is this r r r means r r that is called radiation resistance of an antenna so very simple to say if you understand this one you can estimate the fields of an antenna from the fields you can calculate the power radiated by this antenna once the power is known to you if you split into two components you can calculate even the radiation resistance of a, an antenna also so now step by step i would like to do this derivation no need to remember anything try to wait try to understand the procedure of deriving all these things right so from the first point i can say estimate the retarded potentials so what is the potential here you can say the potential at a point r is equal to you can say that mu by 4 pi this is integral of volume integral of what is its source j of t minus r by v because they are delayed by r by v seconds that's why retarded potential is also called as delayed potential divided by r into dv dash this is the expression actually we got from the retarded potential concept now what you have to assume for the smallest current element you can assume a constant current distribution so now i can say that assume assume constant current distribution constant current distribution now using this constant current distribution what you can say you can say that integral j into dv i can say that integral j into dv so that is equal to what is this j means ampere per meter square into meter cube you can say that meter square and meter cancelled so it will come has ampere into meter ampere means i meter means dl so instead of integral j into dv dash i can write down i d i into dl so i can write down here a of r r is equal to mu by 4 pi mu by 4 pi so integral j into dv dash means it is i dl so this is equal to i into dl why i into dl ampere into meter ampere into meter so i can say that this is mu by 4 pi into i dl so this is j the current density and you can say that i dl but i am taking here i dl cos omega t because it is an alternating current element that means it is an isolating dipole so i can say that cos of omega of t minus r by v divided by r this is the potential expression what we got because of the oscillating dipole so i think you understood how ideal comes here so as it is a constant current distribution happily i can write down here now remember my dear friends mu by mu in mu by 4 pi into ideal cos omega of t minus r by v divided by r this r by v is already known to you it is nothing but the delay that is caused because of the distance that is called retarded potentials concepts now once you know this i would like to tell you in which direction the a is acting now you see 
the current element is in which direction z direction current element in z direction in the same direction the potential is also existing and you can you cannot expect the potential in y direction and x direction that's why i can say that this potential will be always will be in the direction of your z direction only because from magnetics in the emf classes you can understand very clearly whenever the current is flowing through this this is the current i that is flowing through this magnetic lines are circular these are circular magnetic lines so okay so whenever you are taking whenever you are taking a current that is flowing through a wire like this in this direction magnetic lines will be circular like this that means it is in the xy plane this is y and this is x and the potential always will be in the z direction magnetic field will be in this plane like this so that's why whatever the potential that is there doubtless we can say it is existing only in which direction z direction so the di the direction of your magnetic lines the direction of your potential is nothing but your direction of your element here so as the element is placed in z direction the potential also in z direction so that's why i can write down here the a which is actually in z direction i can say az is equal to mu by 4 pi into idl cos omega of t minus r by v divided by r this is the expression for the potential in the z direction so here i can say very clearly ax is equal to 0 no potential in x direction and no potential in y direction here so if you see the steps here we already completed the first step estimated the retarded potentials already we have written see hmm. dear students dear students in this class we are going to see the fields of energy here so for that you take this figure let us assume that a current element idl is at the center of the spherical coordinate system that means it is at the origin you have ar a theta and a phi is equal to is equal to sin theta cos phi sin theta sin phi cos theta cos theta cos phi cos theta sin phi minus sin theta minus sin phi cos phi zero into this is the matrix you have to follow into this is ax ay and az ax ay and az now you can write the components of ar a theta and a phi from this so here you see ax and ay and az already you know the values of this what is the ax and ay values they are zeros this is zero and this is zero but only the potential in the z direction is existing that's why just to do the multiplication of these two matrices r is equal to this term into ax this term into ay this term into az these two terms are zeros that's why az remains you can say that ar is equal to az into cos theta this is the first one we got from this and the second one is you can say what is a theta a theta is nothing but you can say that this is zero and this is zero minus sin theta so therefore you can say a theta is equal to minus az into sin theta so this is the magnetic potential in theta direction and what is a phi a phi if both are zeros means you can say a phi is also equal to zero so there is no potential in phi direction so a phi is equal to zero so you can say that ar is equal to az cos theta and a theta is equal to minus az sin theta and a phi is equal to zero so this way you have to convert from cartesian coordinate system into spherical coordinate system so now the potentials are readily available in your spherical coordinate system then happily we can go through this the fourth step 
that is nothing but the estimation of the fields. So how to estimate this field? VH is equal to del cross A. So A equations are readily available there. Then mathematically you have to calculate the curl of A so that you are going to get your magnetic field here. After estimating the potentials, we are going to estimate the fields using the relation B is equal to del cross A. It is the definition of vector magnetic potential that is also equal to mu h. So from this I can calculate what is h? h is equal to 1 by mu of del cross A. Del cross A means curling of your vector magnetic potential. So in order to save the time I have given this entire solution here. Here b is equal to del cross A is equal to by Vector calculus you can write down 1 by r square sin theta, this is the determinant. A r, r a theta and a phi, these are the unit vectors here. And dou by dou r, dou by dou theta, dou by dou phi and a r, r a theta, r sin theta, a phi, this is the determinant. Now expand this determinant, you are going to get this 1 by r square sin theta and this entire expression here. So if you see this expression and there is dou by dou phi and there is dou by dou phi. That means change of vector magnetic potential with phi direction. But remember my dear friends, suppose this is the current element. The current is flowing through this. Whenever the current is flowing in the z direction like this, magnetic lines are circular. Circular magnetic lines are there. That means it is the direction of the phi. In the direction of the phi, there is no change of potentials. So, change of potential in the phi direction is 0. That is why wherever you are having dou by dou phi, that will be equal to 0. That means it is the symmetry what we are following here. So, at each and every point it is same. That is why there is no change of potential in this direction. That is why you can say dou by dou phi is equal to 0. So, because of the symmetry, because of the symmetry, dou by dou phi is equal to 0. So, in this expression, if you put dou phi, dou by dou phi is equal to 0, then you are going to get this expression here. Del cross A is equal to 1 by r square sin theta and this one, r sin theta dou by dou r into r into a theta minus r into sin theta dou by dou theta into a r. In which direction? Phi direction. It is in phi direction. Del cross A is existing in phi direction. And this del cross A is equal to, here you see, this is r sin theta and r sin theta here, r sin theta here, common. So, r sin theta and r sin theta will be cancelled. So, 1 by r will be here. So, this is the finalized expression for your del cross A. Del cross A, this is the finalized expression and you have to remember it for the future derivation also. This is the expression you have to remember. So, in this expression, now I would like to substitute what is a theta and what is a r. It is a function of two things. So, already you know what is AR? AR is equal to, AR is equal to, you know, AZ cos theta, AZ cos theta. And what is A theta? A theta is equal to minus AZ sin theta. So, substitute the values of this AR and A theta in the expression. And what is AZ once again? AZ means the vector magnetic potential in Z direction, which is the first equation just estimated from your heuristic approach or your Maxwell's approach. So now let us continue this derivation and by substituting this A R and A theta and A Z, you are going to get the magnetic field expression H. So this is the expression you have to use for getting the magnetic field. Okay. So now let us substitute these values in this expression. Okay. Got this final expression del cross A is equal to 1 by R of dou by dou R, R into A theta minus dou by dou theta into A R A phi. Already we have written A R A theta expressions, A R is equal to A Z cos theta, A theta is equal to A Z sin theta. So substitute A R and A theta in the above equation. We are going to get del cross A is equal to 1 by R of minus dou by dou R of R into A Z sin theta into A theta minus dou by dou theta into A Z cos theta. Now what is A Z? Already you know A Z expression magnetic vector potential in the z direction is equal to. It is the equation actually written from our retarded potentials concept. 
ఏ జెడ్ ఈజ్ ఇక్కడ మ్యూ బై ఫోర్ పై ఐడియల్ కాజ్ ఒమేగా ఆఫ్ టీ మైనస్ ఆర్ బై వి బై ఆర్ సో ఇట్ ఈస్ నథింగ్ బట్ రిటార్డెడ్ పొటెన్షియల్ విచ్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో కాల్డ్ ద డిలేడ్ పొటెన్షియల్ సో ఇన్ ది ప్లేస్ ఆఫ్ ఏ జెడ్ జస్ట్ సబ్స్టిట్యూట్ దిస్ సో దిస్ ఈస్ ద ఎక్స్ప్రెషన్ యూ గాట్ ఇన్ ఆర్డర్ టు సేవ్ ద టైప్ జస్ట్ ఐ హ్యావ్ రిటర్న్ ఇట్ వెరీ క్లియర్లీ యూ కెన్ ఫాలో ఇట్ వెరీ ఈజీలీ ఆల్సో సో హియర్ ఇన్ ది ప్లేస్ ఆఫ్ ఏ జెడ్ సబ్స్టిట్యూట్ దిస్ అండ్ కమ్ హియర్ and wherever there is wherever there is a derivative that is dou by dou theta and one more thing is you can say that this is dou by dou or just to do the small differentiation partial differentiation you are going to get this so this is 1 by r of this entire expression you are going to get this so why it is omega by omega by v this is because of the partial differentiation so like that you do your mathematics here and finally what you have to say is this del cross a is existing in which direction phi direction a phi then just take the similar terms outside and just take the r inside here so if you take r inside it will become rv and it will become r square this is here ideal sin theta mu by 4 pi into ideal sin theta is common and you can take out the common factor here so that's why ideal sin theta by 4 pi into mu into two terms you are going to get that is minus omega sin omega of t minus r by v divided by r v plus cos omega of t minus r by v by r square into a phi so this is the expression you got this is del cross a so you got this expression after substituting your a r and a theta and that too in terms of a z so this is the expression you got it so what it will be this is equal to del cross a is equal to b b means magnetic flux density so what is this b b is nothing but mu h so i can say mu h is equal to del cross a but my intention is my objective is for getting the expression for h so that's why i want to write down the h expression here h is equal to 1 by mu of del cross a but remember friends del cross a is already readily available so if you take 1 by mu of this entire expression you are, you are going to get this so if you take this 1 by mu of this then if you take 1 by mu of this and mu and v will be cancelled then you are going to get your h expression here therefore h expression finally you can get here it is equal to h bar is equal to h bar is equal to ideal sin theta by 4 pi ideal sin theta divided by 4 pi into minus omega sin omega of t minus r by v divided by r v divided by r v plus cos omega of t minus r by v divided by r square in which direction pi direction so the magnetic field is in which direction pi direction very simple it is quite logical so what you have done you have taken a spherical coordinate system here so this is z axis and this is y axis and this may be x axis so our current element is in which direction z direction whenever the current element is in z direction in the phi direction the magnetic field will be there because magnetic field lines are circular so this is matching with this so your h is existing in which direction phi direction so whenever you are taking the current element in z direction the magnetic field lines are circular so circular means in the x y plane you are going to get this so this is the expression for this magnetic field density and remember friends this is the most important expression for telling the regions or fields of an antenna now once h bar is available to you already our discussion in the fields of an alternating current element the magnetic field expression already we got it so once you know this magnetic field expression happily you can calculate your electric field expressions also so what may be the relation using the maxwell's equation and you can say that del cross h is equal to j plus d dot but in the free space j is equal to zero so it will be zero and del cross h is equal to i can say epsilon times e dot now this is equal to del cross h is equal to you can say that epsilon into dou e by dou t and remember already you know the expression for the h here and you take the del cross h from vector calculus 
then you are going to get e by integrating this one so what is the final expression e is equal to 1 by epsilon integral del cross h into dt so in the next class what we do we are going to calculate what is del cross h here already h is available once del cross h is available you integrate with respect to time you are going to get the electric fields also so if you know the magnetic field and electric fields of an alternating current element you can calculate the fields of any type of antenna just only one thing is you have to change the specified current distribution so our logic is very simple if you know a smallest length of an antenna fields here at an observation point p here then definitely if you integrate all these elements here it becomes a big antenna so for any type of antenna you can calculate the fields provided if you know the procedure for this so the procedure is very simple first of all you have to estimate the retarded potentials and then you assume the current distribution then you convert your cartesian coordinate system problem into spherical coordinate system then once a is available try to calculate del cross a in order to find the h once h is available just you calculate del cross h you are going to get e here it is a sequential derivation but uh, my sincere suggestion is try to go through the each and every step do it on your own and it will be very easy for you i hope you understood the way of getting the magnetic field of a an antenna okay thank you